Hey guys, my name is Jason Schuster. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I own Intricate Art Spine and Body Solutions. It's a continuing education company teaching other doctors how to do a couple things. Today we're going to talk about MOTC. It's an awesome mitochondrial peptide. By the end of this class, which will be part one, you guys will understand what MOTC is, how it improves mitochondrial health, how it improves overall metabolic health, and how to improve your health and the health of your patients. All right, you guys, so MOTC is a mitochondrial peptide, right? This one is a, has a long name to it. MOTC stands for Mitochondrial Open Reading Frame 12S RNA Type C, right? So it stands for the Mitochondrial Open Reading Frame of the 12S segment of the Mitochondrial RNA Type C, or MOTC. Much easier to say MOTC. So MOTC is a mitochondrial-derived peptide com composed of 16 amino acids, so it's a lot smaller than some of the other ones like thymosin beta-4, which is 43 amino acids, and thymosin alpha-1 is 30-something amino acids. MOTC is only 16 amino acids long. It's encoded by the 12S RNA region of the mitochondrial genome. So remember, we have mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA, right, you guys? So this is a mitochondrial peptide, so it's working on the mitochondria. So we've talked a lot about the mitochondria in this class and in the nutrition and supplementation classes in the intro class we go over the mitochondria a lot in these in these classes you guys because the mitochondria are one of the most important base elements of our body that functioning well because they're what's responsible for producing our ATP or our energy unit so if we don't have enough ATP our mitochondria are not functioning properly, right? If they don't have oxygen or if they're dysfunctional for some reason due to lack of mitochondrial peptides, which could be the reason, right? They can't produce enough ATP. We go into energy deficiency and we have all sorts of problems, right? So MOTC is a really, really helpful, healthy peptide, just like all these other ones. Overall, it, it helps improve health and longevity, just like all these other peptides do, right? So the mitochondria, contain independent genomes that are that are unique right you guys so mitochondrial um, DNA is found in bacteria and a ton of other stuff so there's a lot of bacteria and smaller organisms that don't have DNA and they just have RNA right and so they have some of the same things dysregulation of mitochondrial peptides is one of the underlying factors for chronic idiopathic and autoimmune diseases right so if the mitochondria are not working well nothing in our body works well because it doesn't have enough energy so the mitochondria are primarily responsible, remember you guys, the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle producing ATPs, right? So supplements that improve mitochondrial health like nicotinamide mononucleotide, nic nic nicotinamide riboside, omega-3s, they all improve health in slightly different mechanisms of action. And MOTC is one of them along with GHK and other stuff. So Mitochondrial dysfunction is one of the underlying things you see in cancer patients, cardiovascular disease patients, which is the leading killer in the United States, diabetes, chronic fatigue, and a bunch of other nasty stuff. So by regulating the mitochondria and giving the mitochondria stuff that they need to function properly, you guys, or stuff that they produce already, but may not be in high enough concentrations in the cell, again, you're bypassing the energy requirement of the mitochondria to produce those proteins. If you can put the proteins into the body, you kind of bypass the energy needed to create those proteins, and those proteins do stuff, and they have a positive effect back on the DNA, the DNA expression of the DNA and RNA itself, which helps alter the way that they produce proteins and what genes are read and expressed. The mitochondrial DNA and the nuclear DNA need to interact and talk with each other, you guys. They, you can't have one with, we can't function with just one or the other, right? We need, we need both sets of DNA for, for normal, healthy function. So the DNA, the nuclear DNA, and the mitochondrial DNA interact with each other and they talk to each other. MOTC helps with that communication, just like with dry needling helps communication between the, the brain and the rest of the body. MOTC is also doing that, but it's helping specifically with communication between the mitochondrial DNA and the nuclear DNA. So it displays endocrine-like transcriptional regulation of muscle metabolism, insulin response, energy production, and a whole bunch more stuff that the mitochondria do. So. MOTC levels elevate about 12 fold secondary to exercise and that lasts for about four hours. So again, this is a pretty good study to do for most things. Does exercise elevate the level of whatever you're trying to study? If the answer is yes, 
it's likely that that thing is, he is healing and healthy for you, right? And then we can do studies like this has been done with all these things, right? So exercise increases the concentration of MOTC by 12 fold. It also significantly increases the intracellular inter mitochondrial levels of NAD+, which the mitochondrial need to produce ATP. So MOTC is giving the body proteins that it produces during exercise which are healing and health healthy for us right so it's sort of like i mean you don't want to bypass exercise obviously but you can think about this stuff as sort of like a bypass for exercise where you're getting the benefits of exercise without the exercise that's one way to think about all this stuff so potential dosing for mot c Epithalon is the only one that it's really spoken about doing only once or twice a year. All these other ones, BPC-157, thymosin beta-4, thymosin alpha-1, they can be done on a, do do on a weekly dosing schedule. And most of the doctors, again, this one's from Dr. Edwin Lee too, um, talk about doing it on some type of a rotational schedule where you do it for a month or two on, a month or two off, right? This Dr. Lee uses 10 milligrams subcutaneously weekly, right? It, he talks about this one for improved energy and weight loss. So if your mitochondria are functioning better, you guys, and our body is producing more ATPs and it's not using as much energy, it has more energy to do things like metabolize food and break down food, right? So help helping improve mitochondrial function will help improve your metabolism, metabolic function, and all that stuff. So this is, a, this is a really good diagram of MOTC healing capabilities. So you can see the mitochondrial DNA, right? MOTC decreases inflammation, improves insulin resistance, helps with cardiovascular disease and, and cardiac related injuries, right? So one of the most common side effects of the COVID vaccines, you guys, are myocarditis in young people, which is completely unacceptable, right? That, that in and of itself is enough reason for these things to never have been put on the shelf, but that's what, that's what we got. So it helps produce against the effects of cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular damage. So these things, these peptides are all, have all been shown to be helpful with COVID symptoms and vaccine injury related symptoms. Are any of these things talked about in the mainstream media or on the news or anywhere? No. Are they, ta are, are they taught about in medical schools? No. Why is that? These things are super safe and super healing and healthy. They have potent healing effects and they're totally safe, you guys. Why aren't these talked about in medical school, throughout medical school? The reason is that the people that fund the medical schools, the United States government and the pharmaceutical companies, they don't make money off of these things because they can't patent them because they're natural substances. That is the answer, period, end of story. There's, there's no debate about that. That's the answer, right? So MOTC, just like glucoraphanin and sulforaphane, which are broccoli sprout um, substances that we talk about in the, in the nutrition supplementation class. Glucoraphanin and sulforaphane amplify the NRF2 pathway, which is a mitochondrial anti-inflammatory pathway. It's one of the strongest anti-inflammatory pathways in our body. Very, very important to have activated. People with chronic disease have a decreased activation of NRF2. People that are healthy have an increased activation of NRF2. MOTC and GHK and a lot of the other peptides, including BPC-157, help amplify the NRF2 pathway. So does taking omega-3, so does taking NMN, and, and having sufficient levels of vitamins in your body, right? So really, really helpful. Um, circulating MOTC, just like with GHK, is significantly lower in older people, right? So. MOTC levels in young people are about 20% higher than in, old, than in old people, right? So again, if it doesn't have any serious negative adverse side effects and it's really concentrated in young people compared to old people, it seems like putting it into old people would help. It's a natural thing that our body already produces. It's just not producing as much of it as we age. So why not put more of it in there? And again, that's one of the major ways that exercise helps us stay healthy, you guys, is it stimulates the body to produce these proteins more so than people that don't exercise or eating, eating well does the same thing. So my, the mitochondrial number themselves start to decrease as we age and their function, right? So as we, if you don't exercise and stay healthy and you start to lose muscle mass as we age, our skeletal muscle cells are one of the cell types in our body that have numerous nuclei and numerous mitochondria. One skeletal muscle cell can have up to a couple hundred mitochondria, right? So if the mitochondria, if we're losing actual numbers of mitochondria with sarcomere loss as we age and we're losing mitochondrial function, we're massively decreasing the amount of energy that our body is able to produce, which is one of the, the 
most basic factors that causes us to age and degrade as we get older is loss of energy production. So if there's any ways that we can increase energy production in our body while we're, while, while we're younger and maintain those levels throughout life, it's really, really gonna give, basically it's like putting extra horses onto your engine, right? It's putting more horsepower into your engine throughout life, which just helps the car go better. That, that's a simple way to think about it. Thanks for watching, you guys. This is part one. Part two will be coming up in a couple of days. Check out our peptide class if you want to learn more about more of the cool peptides that we have available to us out there.